Good morning, everyone. This is Dave Meyer with BusyWeb. So delighted to have you with us today. And we are going through web do's and don'ts on our Twin West webinar. So thank you all so very much for joining us. And uh, I am going to uh, skip over to my Hangout or my window in just a moment. But uh, in the meantime, wanted to go through just a few things. As you look at your event window today, you'll notice that there's a couple of links right down on this page. And so for our agenda today, we're going to have a link and a page that we want you to connect to us on. So if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and set up that um, window by going to the Google Plus link under number one, and you'll be able to connect with us and ask questions via the Q&A tool on that page. So let's go over to that first for a second while we wait for everybody to join. And so if you click on this Google Plus link from the event page today, you'll be able to see a new window right here. And that new window is going to point us right to a page that says Q&A and live. And so what we've got on here is um, all of the events and all the details on here on what we do. And um, you should be able to see that. Oops, I think I'm clicking on the wrong page. It's, uh, this is SEO basic, so I want to take you to a different page. I apologize for that. Um, if we click right here, I need to refresh this page because I changed that link for you. If we go right here now, we'll be able to click and you go onto this page. And then from the page, it takes you into SEO basics. Well, that shouldn't be website do's and don'ts. So with website do's and don'ts, there's a Q&A and a live button in here. That means that we're on and live right here. So if you click the play button on this event, it'll open up a streaming window. And then that streaming window also has a question and answers box. And so if you ask us questions on that Q&A box, I'll be able to see what's happening inside of that page. So I'm going to first pause this so that we don't have pr troubles. And um, then if you click on this green button in the lower right hand corner, you can click ask a new question and I'll just type ask a question here or offer your terrible or your own website examples for comment. And so what we'll do today as part of kind of a special thing, I'm going to also offer up not only your favorite terrible websites, and if you're going to offer up a terrible website, do me a favor and just say terrible or what do you think and hit um, the URL of that site and we'll open it up and we'll take a look at it together. Or we can uh, also, you can offer up your own website if you're feeling particularly brave. And uh, I will tell you what you can and can, what you can do to improve that site and some options that we see for ways that you can improve things. So this is going to be a little bit more interactive than a normal webinar. And uh, again, thank you and welcome to all of our Twin West friends. We are going to go through a whole bunch of stuff today. Let me swap that back over. So we'll get right down to business. But again, during the event, I'm going to switch back and forth on the window a few times just to make sure that everybody's on the same page and that we all uh, know where we're at. So today, on behalf of the Twin West Chamber of Commerce, we're happy to present the busy webinar for what not to do on the web. We'll also cover what to do on the web. And uh, we'll go through a little bit about busy web, who we are and what we do. And then we're going to jump right into what not to do talk about mobile responsiveness and the fact that you need to have that on your website. And then we're going to go through some examples of websites with design issues, with usability issues, with search engine optimization in issues. And then we'll spend some time talking about what you should do. So this what you should do part is going to probably be the most positive part of the day. And uh, I hope to not make your eyeballs bleed too much during this event because we're going to cover all kinds of uggo websites and um, cover it. At the end, as I mentioned, we're going to doing, be doing some Q&A and tech support. So if you have questions about your website that you'd like to have us help you with, if you're wondering if uh, or would like a professional opinion on a site and what you can do, I'll share with you a couple of things. But um, one of those is going to be a way that you can get a professional overview on your website for free and inside of 45 seconds. 
at the end of this uh, webinar. And if you're one, if you want to cheat and go ahead on that, you can just go to busyweb.com slash buzz to get your own free buzz report at any time. So let's get right into basics. If you do, again, have questions that you want to answer or have answered, just go into that Hangout. And again, from the event window right here, you'll just click on number one on our Google Plus page. You may already be streaming from this window down below, but if you'd like to actually ask us questions during the event, clicking on this Google Plus link will take you into this page where you'll be able to ask us questions by clicking on the green Ask a New Question button. One note on this, you do need to be logged into Google Plus in order to have that work. But if you have a Gmail account at all, you're about 10 seconds away from being a fully registered Google Plus user, even if you've not used it. Um, Gary, thank you very much. I see that your website is up there, and we'll take a look at that during the event today. Thank you very much for being our first brave, um, first, first brave volunteer, and super excited to have you with us. And we have a whole bunch of people online today. I'm excited to see this. So let's get right into business and start talking about those do's and don'ts. So who BusyWeb is, of course, is we've been, we were founded in 99, so we've been doing this for 16 years. We're out of Champlin, Minnesota, just a little bit north. And uh, our team of 14 serves clients all over the world. We have folks that um, cover all kinds of wonderful and fun things. But here's some uh, pictures of our offices um, and we have a wonderful, fantastic team that would love to answer your questions and help you out at any time. We are, of course, an online marketing company that focuses on web design. And so that's why we're talking about web do's and don'ts today. What we do a little bit differently from everyone else, it seems anyway, is we try to bring a little bit of common sense into our web design. And when we build a website, we make sure that it actually does something for our customers that it gets some sort of a call to action, that it drives business. And we like to say that we turn our websites for our clients into money printing machines, or at least lead generation machines, so that we can get more people in. And oftentimes that takes online marketing, so we also have a full suite of Buzz Builders online marketing prog products, including search engine optimization, content marketing, pay-per-click ads, web hosting, anything that you need to connect up both on your, on your website and then from your website, you can seamlessly populate all of your social networks. So we also do social media engagements. And here's some examples and the way things look in a properly set up social media account. And we should probably cover ugly social media accounts at some point too. Let's get right into it and talk about what not to do on the web. So if you have a lot of concerns or if you're wondering or if you're thinking, you know, we're setting up a new website, We've just contracted with our web designer, and um, you know this this fella is our cousin's uncle, and uh, he really knows what he's what he's doing. He developed a website in uh, HTML back in 1997, so he's he's a good he's a good guy. Um, we're going to give you some watchwords and some things to look out for to make sure that you don't fall into the trap of websites. You know, I don't really care so much if they're ugly, as much as if they don't do their job. They need to drive leads for your business. They need to connect you with your customers. And if they don't do those two things and help you present the image that you want to the world, then you need to keep working until you get there. First thing inside of that is really having a mobile responsive website. Now, this is one of those things that even if you have a beautiful website, there's a chance that you might not be doing this yet. So I always cover this. If you're on your site right now, if you want to open up a separate window, and again, to do that, you want to open up a new tab. That would be Control-T if you're in Google Chrome or um, Firefox, and I think the same thing is, in, is if you're in Internet Explorer. But open up a new tab, uh, or actually a new window, so it would be Control-N on all of the browsers. Um, grab your website and squish it. So take the handle on the right-hand side of your browser window and squish your website to as skinny as it will go. And I'm going to show you what that means right now. Um, if I go over to Google Chrome and we go into a page here, I am going to open up this window. We'll go into one of our ugly ones. And this is a, this is a preview, but holy cow, this one's crazy. If I squish this website, this site is actually mobile responsive. See how it's rebuilding itself as we go? So, you know, taste has no boundaries, but at least it's built correctly. 
if I go into, for example, the Register of Deeds Association, if I squish this, notice how everything's getting cut off on the right-hand side. Um, what we do inside of this, or what the problem is with this type of website, when it, get, when it doesn't squish, Google doesn't like that at all. And what that means is Google actually sets up and doesn't send your website when people are searching on mobile devices if your website's not what they call mobile friendly and what we call mobile responsive. So if your website doesn't squish or if you open up your website on your phone and you have to pinch and zoom to see things on your website if the entire website is visible on that one screen and it hasn't and it looks exactly the same as it does on your web browser uh, on your computer then your website's not mobile responsive and as of April 21st of this year Google stopped displaying non-responsive sites in mobile search results what that means is that if someone is searching on your for your keywords for so for example if you're a financial services company and someone is searching for home loans, um, your website won't show up in that home loans search, even if you would have normally, because your website's not mobile responsive. So Google is only going to display websites that look good on mobile devices in mobile search. Might not seem like a big deal, but up to 80% of searches right now are happening initially on mobile devices. And if you think about our new daily lives and how we work, um, if you're in a meeting with someone, someone mentions, mentions or refers to you a website, or if you just happen to have a couple of minutes, you grab your phone more often than not, especially in the off hours, and you search for whatever you're searching for on your phone. So if you're one of those companies, or if you're a company that relies on search to get found, and really, who doesn't? then you need to think about having a mobile responsive website. I did have, I do have a link here to run a test at google.com slash webmasters tools mobile friendly and it's very simple. Um, I would just Google mobile friendly test if you're curious and it'll show you a page just like this. Of course, BusyWeb's website is mobile responsive so we got a little green light um, for websites that are not mobile responsive it gives you a very different page. So if I click on this link, um, it's going to take me into this mobile friendly page. And just for the heck of it, let's enter in the poor with Register of Deeds Association for the WRA. And if I click here, enter, analyze, it's gonna analyze it very quickly. And then what it'll do is it'll spit right back out what that is. This website is not mobile friendly. The text is too small to read. The links are too close together. It uses incompatible plugins. The mobile viewport isn't set. And there's all kinds of other stuff that's wrong with this website, of course, but it shows you kind of what it'll do. So again, if you just Google mobile friendly test, you'll see that as the top result. Enter in your website and that'll be it. that'll be up. I won't embarrass anybody on the site yet. Um, we'll wait until the end for, for going through these, these sorts of things, but we'll probably take um, Gleason and Tonka and look at your websites and give you a little bit of a uh, little bit of advice. So that's first. If you don't have a mobile friendly website, make sure that you do um, as soon as possible. Next up is going to be design issues. So you really need to take some time and think about what your website looks like and how you present yourself to the world. If you have too many colors or clashing colors, if you have ugly fonts or outdated design, um, it's going to be very difficult for folks to want to do business with you. Now, some, some companies or some organizations can get away with having a terrible website because if you're trying to present yourself as an amateur or as somebody that's not going to charge a lot of money for something, that might be an okay thing to do. Um, however, there's a difference between having a website that looks approachable and having a website that looks like your four-year-old set it up. And this Riverside Art Center Holiday Gift Gallery is one of those examples of a website that probably could use a little bit of help. You know, there's clashing colors. That orange and the pink are just terrible. It's got yellow underneath. The fonts are all crazy. If you if you specify 
Comic Sans in your website design. You know, even if you're a company that goes that that tries to connect with um, children, I, I would be just careful to make sure that your website is readable, is easy to check out, and works really well. Um, you'll also notice that there's autoplay files that happen on occasion on websites, and uh, we actually have had this happen with our clients when we look at their old websites for the first time we run through and all of a sudden music starts playing on the website. Um, that's bad and it's bad for a number of reasons but usually and the most among those is it annoys your users. If someone's browsing in a corporate environment, if you're in a cube and you all of a sudden start playing some silly song on your website or if there's a video on the website, um, I've had clients that have asked me, begged me in fact, to allow them to walk onto the top of the screen, like the having having an avatar of themselves walk onto the top of the computer user's screen and say, here, welcome to my website. Here's the things that you might be interested in. Well, that relies on Flash, and that's my segue into Flash. Flash is an old technology. Um, <laughs> Adobe itself is actually sunsetting Flash. Um, in the next year or so and the final nail in the coffin was that Firefox is now saying that it's not going to support flash in the in upcoming versions um, The iPhone was really or Apple was the first Company to really come down really hard against flash and say we're not going to feature it You'll now notice that all Android phones no longer support flash either and um, window phone Windows phones don't either so if you look at that what that is, is for, for Flash-based websites, what they are is very resource heavy. There's a lot of code that goes on in the background. And with Flash-based websites, like our friends at this Mystery Meat company, um, this is a Flash website and these things are bouncing all over the place, right? So not awesome. What it does is it gives, it just makes your site heavier. And so this is taking up all kinds of room on the website. If I was opening this up on a mobile device, it would take forever for me to download this over a 3G connection. And none of this content would work anyway because the website or because phones don't support um, Flash. So as you look at that and as you click on these things, you know, we've got this one has all kinds of hovery overy things. And um, this this site, there's another one over here. Which one was I looking at just a moment just a moment ago? Here's a here's a brief preview. Oh, this one here, um, the DSNRY. You know, this is impossible to do on mobile devices. This is Flash at its worst. The other problem with Flash is that Flash is not easily optimizable for search engines. All of the content that you see, all Google sees is a big chunk of code and it does not see all of the pretty pictures that you have on here. Although this one is set up relatively okay as far as SEO because when you hover over it, it at least shows you some text. But that text, unless it's perfectly optimized for the web, you're just wasting your client's time and you're not being seen on Google because Google can't tell anything other than that there's a big box of something on the website. So Flash, very, very bad. Don't use Flash on your website. If you have Flash on your website, talk to your developer and ask them to take it off of your website because it's slowing you down. It's not visible on what's increasingly becoming the way that everyone is browsing the website primarily, which is mobile devices. And it's just not optimizable, so you're not getting found anyway. So that's design issues, and as we go through this, I'm just going to cover a few design issues on our Hall of Shame for a moment, and uh, we'll go back into this. So really, as far as design issues, the outdated designs and the things, you can tell that, you know, this one is okay because it's, it's relatively interesting, but, you know, if I scroll on this thing, it takes me to different places. Uh, I'll tell you that my computer's fan has been running really hard ever since I opened up these pages. And so, you know, this is this is just, if I'm on a laptop, it's going to kill my battery. If I'm on a mobile device, it's going to be even faster or the computer's gonna run really hot. The big thing is, even if you have a big broadband pipe, you're not going to get found 
or it's just going to show up. It's going to take forever for people to find your website because it's going to take forever to download. So you need to be careful with that. Um, on this one, you know, what the heck is this thing? You know, the, the navigation is very confusing. There's nothing on here. It's clickonthings.com, and it's an arty kind of website. I get it, but, you know, what, what happens when I click on these things? Nothing. It just goes into another picture or the same picture zoomed in. So what? Big deal. It's just a bunch of pictures. I don't get it, and it doesn't really help me in what I'm doing. It doesn't also help that this next post button is also broken, and, you know, it's just, it's just kind of a disaster. This is another example of a Flash-based website. These slide-outs are happening, and they're just kind of rough. If I squish this website down again, see, it just doesn't do anything. And you can't even read the logo of the company. You know, it's Spectrum Powder Works, and it kind of looks like powdery kind of something, but, yeah, I just, I just don't get it. If you hover over this, you might notice that it says Home on here. Well, great. That's nothing helpful as far as search engine optimization. You can barely read the navigation across the bottom and notice that they're popping up and bouncing. That's, again, all bad, terrible flash. Google actually downgrades you, and you could be listed as a suspect site for keyword spam if you have tone-on-tone -tone links on your website. It's not readable. It's not helpful, and Google will actually actively stop listing your website and ban you from search engine results if you do silly stuff like this. And as a matter of fact, I'll talk quite a bit more about search engine optimization and what not to do in a couple of slides. But if you're leaning on old SEO, if you had your website completely optimized back in 2004 or 2005 or even all the way up to like 2010, um, Google has changed all of its algorithms markedly, dramatically. And so if you haven't taken some time to optimize your website or update it, you know, you're going to need to get back into that because I'm sure you're seeing that your results are looking very poor. Um, so with Spectrum Powder Works here, these poor folks, they're stuck with something that's just kind of crazy and that doesn't really help. Um, this one, we already talked about the Register of Deeds Association. Uh, it, you know, it's just a bunch of black text and then blue text. It's contrasting text that doesn't work. This is a flash-based thing that's going over the top. These are images, and that's slowing the website down. Um, it's just it's just terrible. It's ugly. Um, Tickets Wizard does you know a bunch of content on it, but I don't know if I would trust this company to purchase anything from because it looks like you know this is this is some uh, clip art that they found. This is a silly thing that um, you know it's it's kind of looks wizardy, I guess, but it also kind of looks like a spray painted on thing on a wall. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on here that's just not easy for your for your visitors. When you think about search engine optimization, when you think about user optimization, really, you need to make sure that your website is as useful as humanly possible to the people that are visiting it. And if it's not, if it's completely only serving you, if it only talks about you and your sis and your company, if it only does um, or if it has terrible looking content that makes people wonder if they should be working with you, um, you know, all of that is, is dangerous. Um, gosh, this one is just crazy. Arngren.net, technology and gadgets. I don't know how they expect to get, to get anything sold on this. They've got a waving Santa in the middle of their page here. Um, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just crazy. And I get the, the need to want to push things on, but I have to scroll sideways to see things on this site. There's our buddy, the Waving Santa, again. And there's a guy that's sitting on top of a, uh, a four-road or something. Yeah, it's just, it, it's confusing, it's messy, it's crazy. Um, I think most of their traffic has come from ugliest websites, um, websites because that's what I found. I just Googled ugly websites to find a lot of these. And so as we get into this, you know, I, I wouldn't do business with these folks. You know, there's just too much here. It's just crazy. Um, you know, gimbal fog monitor. A lot of these things are in different, different, um, different languages. Um, Hutchins for U.S. Congress. Um, yeah, that, that's great, George, but holy moly, you're making my eyeballs bleed here. Um, you know, contact us in highlighted yellow. 
you're going to see a few other things that are just terrible um, things not to do. But you know, looking like you took a highlighter and just went all over your screen, um, that's probably not the best way to get content or to get noticed. Um, this is this website's being noticed for all the wrong reasons, and it looks like somebody's you know again. I think a twelve-year-old is more savvy on the web than this. It looks like someone's grandmother put this together, and um, you know, all, all respect to our grandmothers, but they probably aren't web designers. And this is just one of those things that's crazy. Um, this one is just it just kind of looks silly, right? So you've got this tone-on-tone -tone stuff, the navigation drops down and it's kind of confusing. We don't understand what Jamie Live means. Exclusive products, you know, yeah, I get it, but why not just get out details on all of the things that Jamie does? And she's got all of this content on here. The page just kind of explodes text. And how am I going to connect? How am I going to use all of this stuff? The best thing about this website, this is a feng shui expert. So her feng shui on her website itself could not be more wrong. So if I was to invite Jamie into my house to help decorate my, my house for feng shui, I would expect to have her explode Pepto-Bismol pink and put kitschy crap all over the walls because that's what she's doing with her website. So you know, it's, very, it's very interesting to say the least. Um, gates and fences, you know, all this content. There's hovers over on here. I don't know what that does or what it means. Um, this is something that someone put together. Didn't really think about what they're going to do. I don't understand why these are red versus black. Um, I don't get what these things do. This is just slowing the website down. These kind of look like um, pneumatic tubes when you're going to pop them in, and I don't think that's what they meant to do. But it's all very kind of strange. Um, Again, if you do have questions and comments on the website, feel free to log into Google Plus from the event page. And I'm going to switch over here and we'll go into this. It is website do's and don'ts. So if you have questions here, I'm going to plus one all of the ones that we have here. And uh, then you'll be able, you'll know that I saw those. But um, for Gleason Printing and Tonka Financial, we will take a look at you in a little while. But um, for now, for sure, make sure that you're getting a hold or that you're entering in any questions that you do have. So if you're wondering if something is kosher or if you're wondering if something you know, is, is okay or usable or if, there's or if there's good uses for specific types of technology, please do let me know. Again, in order to get onto this, you just need to go into the page on BusyWeb's event page that you got the, re the email about today. And then under number one, you're going to click on this Google Plus link. When you click on that Google Plus link, it's going to take you into this page after you click the play button. And uh, you'll be able to ask a question by clicking on the green button. Thank you all very much for joining. we got a lot of folks on here, so I'm just excited to uh, have you all with us. Um, okay, so brief tour is kind of over, and I'm going to get into some content issues next. So let's talk about those content issues. For... One of the things on your website is that it needs to be as current as humanly possible. The, the more often you update your website, the more signals you're sending to Google and search engines and to your users that you're serious about your website. You know, this is one of those things, especially if we're not in content delivery for a living, if we don't design websites for a living, if you're busy with your sandwich shop or with your financial services company, um, or you know any any of the other folks that are on here, and if you want to, you can also enter in your industry, and I will Google your industry um, during this call, and we'll talk about some some good and bad things for your industry. Um, but go ahead and enter that in Q and A. But if you don't have the right content that proves to your visitors that you have a depth of knowledge and that you are a worthy expert on that content. If I am selling drill bits, I am not really selling drill bits. What I sell is holes. And so you need to figure out for your clients and for your products and services what hole you're filling for your clients. That's the type of content that you need to focus on on your website. Here's an easy um, rule of thumb. If you have frequently asked questions or things that people call you about all the time and you are thinking about putting together a frequently asked questions page, 
break up all that content into separate posts on your website and use that as your content. That will take you a long ways into having relevant and interesting content for your clients. The four steps of marketing are to engage, inform, capture, and convert. You need to be engaging by having great looking content and content that entertains and draws people in. You also need to inform to tell them that you know what you're doing and to prove to them that you have the depth of knowledge that they're looking for. One of the nice things about being a business owner or being involved in our businesses is that we are, we, we have at our fingertips information that no one else does. We are experts in our field because we know more than the people we serve. Take some of that expertise and share it on your website for the maximum amount of search engine optimization and for the maximum amount of results. So you've engaged them, you've informed them, you need to capture, and we'll talk about that and again in a minute, but you need to capture their information by telling them what to do. Give them a call to action, a click here, a buy now, a call us today, um, a attend our event, um, whatever you want to tell them. You just have to give them very clear instructions on what you expect them to do. If they don't know what to do when, you visit, when they visit your website, more often than not, they're just going to click away and you're going to lose them. You've spent a lot of time and effort trying to get them to your website. Once they're there, make sure that they take the step that you want them to take so that you can get that business and get that next step. And then, of course, once you've uh, educated them and you've got them engaged, once you've captured their information, then you can work on continuing to connect with them until you've converted them into whatever you want them to be, whether it's a new customer, whether it's an event attendee, whether it's someone that just stops by, or whether it's a new referral partner, you need to be able to get them to entertain and engage, inform, capture, and convert. So um, enough on that soapbox. If you have old content or too much content on your website, you know, we saw some of those things where there was just so much text on that website that it became impossible to, to find any information. Bullet, bullet points are king on websites. You need to give folks easily scannable, readily available information. They need to be able to see what, you, what you've got. They need to be able to find it at a glance what they need and move on and get on with their days especially as we talk about mobile responsive design, and a good designer will help you with this because it's really different on a mobile device than it is on a website, but all of your most important things should be at the top of each page of your website and scrollable. The content is always, or content on your website is generally read the same way we all read from left to right and from top to, de from top to bottom. So make sure that your most important stuff is right available in the top left of your website. And a lot of folks spend a lot of time, we put a beautiful logo up in the top left, we put all kinds of other st silly stuff. Well, that's the one place that everybody's looking at. So maybe having a clearer or a more close call to action or specific way to draw people into the next pieces of your content, um, that's what's going to get, get things done for them. So. You know, if you don't have enough content, it's just as bad and maybe even worse than having too much because if there's no content, Google doesn't know what you've got on your website and neither does anyone that happens to find you. You're not going to show up in search results if there's no content on your website because Google doesn't know what's on that site because there's nothing there. If you don't have any calls to action, people are going to miss what you're asking them to do and that's the problem that we saw with that website that just had a bunch of pictures on it and no, no frame of reference or context. And really, you need to think about your website being a map to your business to get people to do business with you. So if you have a brochure site that has, you know, click here for more, I've even seen it where they try to, where people try to develop a website that looks like a brochure. So you click in the lower right hand corner to turn the page for the next bit of content. Well, that's great for print, and that's great when you, hand, when you hand things to people. I would argue that the classic brochure content or the classic brochure format is kind of dead as well. But, you know, it's certainly not the way you're going to expect to interact with something on the web, and certainly, definitely not 
on a mobile device. So think about that and dig in a little bit more. Make sure that your content really delivers. And we're going to talk a little bit about search engine optimization content techniques in a few slides. But you know that in general, just share enough information, but no more than necessary. You're, you want to strive for the elegance in your websites. And the, the definition of elegance is only as much information as possible, as, as necessary to engage your client but no more. If you have a ton of content on your website, my advice to you is to commit to cutting that in half, looking at it and seeing how it, how it feels on that, on that page, and then try to cut it in half again. You, don't, you can keep all of the content that's on your website, but spread it out a little bit so it's not just puked all over the page. You know, if, if, you're, if you're asking people to Hunt, hunt and peck or play Where's Waldo with what they're trying to find on your website. We don't have the time for that anymore. We don't have the attention span for that. And especially on the world of the web where you're just a back button away from getting back to you know your search results and moving on, you need to make sure that you're as clear, as concise, and as informative as possible. And so you have to have that depth of content, but that content needs to be contextual. So have content on your website, on your homepage in particular, yes, but make sure that you give people ways to click for more. You'll find that your conversion rates will go up the less content you have visible and the more you drive towards just that one option. If you have a large section on your website, that just says click here for more information or click here to register for our event and that's all people can see. If that's the landing page that you're trying to drive people to and you're trying to get more at event attendance, that's one of the best ways to ensure that people actually take that step. If, however, you have your registration for your event three quarters of the way down a page that has 7,500 words on it and that has content all over it, that's not going to work. You know, as we go back into this page and as we go back over to um, uh, Catherine, I will definitely look at um, your at your or at bank industry websites as well, uh, as well as Tonka Financial, I'm, I'm sure. So um, great question. And yes, I definitely will. Um, as well, you know, as we look at this, I'm going to go back over to our window on our yucky websites. This isn't going to get anybody to take any next step. You know, it's got plenty of content on that homepage, too much content. If I just focused on, I even need, I don't even know what this is at first. It's designed to enhance the entry of your home with custom ornamental decorative driveway gates while bringing safety, security, and convenience. Holy cow. How about the best doors available for residents, for residential, or, or you know, the best doors available for your home and family? Great then take them in and say, you know, I want driveway gates, I want garden gates, you know, even on here, they've just set so many different things up. If they really want to try and sell Eagle doors, I don't even know what that is. It's our, our LiftMaster garage doors. I'm pretty sure that that's what that is. Um, that's what I need to focus on right now. Oh, okay. Telephone entry, receivers, remote control. See, I had to kind of play Sherlock Holmes to even figure out what in the heck they're trying to do. Top brand of gate owners and operators, Viking docking, Power Master, Ramster, all this stuff. You see this? I can't even click on it. I can't. It's it's not even code. They're they're trying to do this for SEO. It scrolls off the page for me on my website. That's insanity. You know, it, at a hundred percent, you still can't. I have to scroll one way or the other to even get my website or to even read this content. There is no possible way on the in the universe that they're getting what they're looking for out of this website. And yes, they're in Miami, Florida, so I guess they've been out in the sun too long, but holy Moses, this is just unbelievable. And you know, when you look at this, you know, again, signs of confidence, LA Ornamental at AOL.com. Do you remember AOL? Um, you've got mail, you also have no chance of getting my business. Um, that's just, that's just um, you know, making sure that you've got what you need out of a website is very, very important. And if I hover over this, it tells me gate openers, gate operators, operators, driveway gates, wrought iron, aluminum, and gates. They've got gate, 
five times in their title, Google is not is not reviewing them or is not showing them for gates because they're spamming their keyword stuffing. All right, so other content issues. Holy Moses, look at this thing. It's, it's content back and forth. It's hard to read. Um, this is Gordon Eway Watts. Uh, looks like Gordon is a little bit unhinged, and so I'm going to keep moving forward on Gordon. Um, but again, we've got this navigation thing. I don't, I don't even know what this does or what I'm supposed to be able to do. I guess there's a navigation up here, chronological, alphabetical. Well, that's great. But if I want landscape information, oh, great, it popped up. The only, the, only the five that are up here. Well, that's interesting. It flopped them all down. But good gravy. You know, why, why are you making me work so hard? Um, same thing with the James Bond Museum. I mean, wow, look at that. Red, white, and blue text, black all over the front, big videos stuffed together. I can't even read what some of this stuff is or what the deal is on this stuff. You know, it's just... There's a lot of very tough stuff in here. And yeah, I guess if you if you just took a museum and you threw it up against a website, that might be it. But there's very good ways to convey content. This is not one of them. Um, Bear Springs Blossom. I don't even know what that is. Um, I'm guessing it's a I'm guessing it's a place. What will climate change do to us? Yes. Um, oh, here, yay! Scrolling text across the middle of a page. That's very, very 1998. And so, uh, you know, congratulations on that. Greenhouse gases. Maybe they're sniffing greenhouse gases because this is just a terrible website. And the content isn't helpful. It's also, you're scrolling down forever. There's no chance other than a smart, snarky web designer showing people what not to do that I'm going to, that I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom here. And holy smokes, I got all the way down. All the, all the way to the bottom here, and it took me like a minute to get all the way down to the bottom. Um, the Bolin Report, they're treating this just like they would a tabloid newspaper. Feature article, feature article, feature article, guest article. Um, great. This is incomprehensible. It's content. It's a lot of content, but it's all just smushed together. They have different content that's just kind of squashed in. It's time to end the U.S. vaccine program. Ebo lie. You, you can kind of tell. Bad websites kind of go hand in hand with people that have faulty thought processes. <laughs> but that's not necessarily what I want to display if I am um, someone that's the same thing or that's in the same kind of mental mindset as this Bullen Report, Tim Bullen. Um, I probably want to d display my information in a clear and concise way versus just tin foil hatting it all over the place. Um, welcome to the Siberians of the Heartland, um, the puppy ranch.com. Um, it's awfully close to puppy mill, but, uh, you know, holy cow, there's content on here, but you know, there's a running dog on here. That's, that's just Ouch, this is, this is amazing. Um, this is bouncing back and forth on here, and congratulations on having Siberian Huskies, but you know, um, I don't know if that helps me with anything. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, very, it's, it's very kind of terrible. So there's, there's another great um, example of bad content. Um, got an ugly tub, don't replace it, reglaze it. I guess that's, that's a nice um, call to action at least. Specials by city, Cincinnati, Toledo, um, bathtub refinishing versus bathtub liners. That's blinking, and uh, that's I don't I didn't even know they had blink text anymore. It's not supposed to show up on browsers. The van is squished. Um, they've got a dude's naked butt sticking out of a, of a tub. As wow, this site is best viewed at 1024 by 768 screen resolution. Here's a hint for you: nobody cares, and nobody's going to set their resolution. They don't even know what that means anymore. And uh, that's something that was very interesting. And maybe it, it was it was annoying even in the nine even in the nineties and early two thousands. But you know this is this is just crazy as far as content. I don't know what to do with this. I don't know why to do it. I don't know how to do it. I don't have a phone number in ready. If if a if something's happening in my house and I need to call them, I can't even figure out how to get a hold of these folks. So it's just and, and I get it. It's a plumber. But 
there's no excuse for bad design anymore. There's, there's just no excuse to not have the content readily available for you. We have trades that work with us and I'll show you some of those in a little bit. It's, it can be, it needs to be very clear and you need to build to the expectations. I did a webinar last week on marketing to millennials. Millennials would look at this for maybe a tenth of a second and they would be off to the next thing. They'd be like, nope, this isn't the company for me. Um, and yes, bath magic, reglazing solutions. If I was searching, I wouldn't find it. Ugly tub, at least has tub and ugly in the title, but you're, you're not likely to get any results out of this page. There's just too much again, going against it. Um, wow, penny juice. Um, the children at Kid College love the taste of penny juice and drink it without encouragement from our teachers. Um, great. Cassie is supposed to be a, a teacher, I guess. Um, Cassie is definitely not an English teacher because holy moly, you know, all of these things, my, my eyes are bleeding from all the color. It's all in all caps. And then we have regular, regular caps and then penny juice is in here. Uh, it's, it's just holy smokes. And to mention, you know, I, I wouldn't drink penny juice because I don't want pennies in my juice. Um, holy smokes. There's, there's just too much going on here. This is, this is all it is. This is what it does. Um, it says HTML version on here. I wonder what happens if I just go to, to uh, pennyjuice.com. Wow, HTML or Flash. Um, great, Flash player. Ooh, look at that. Who is Penny Juice? What is Penny Juice? Where is Penny Juice? Got Juice. This, this is not useful at all. And so, uh, yeah, uh, I'm getting a headache looking at it. I need to move on. Um, welcome to our website, the Redwick County Show, uh, our country show. Sunday, Saturday, this is this is actually updated. 40, 43 acres of show. Um, uh, I, just, I, I just don't even know what to say. <laughs> so there's, there's way too much on here and it's not really helpful. Um, let's get back into, so we, we've covered content issues. Let's also talk a little bit about usability. Not planning for mobile is one of the big things, of course. Flash or files that are too big, hidden links, things that are just designed to goof with people. Um, you know, this, this was a corporate website, Major League Baseball ad. It's got that little flash widget on there. That means that it's flash and it's busted, even worse. Um, I, I, I just, I, I was so annoyed with this website that I, I didn't even pull it up and I, I glazed out all of the parts that might identify the owner because it's, it's just that terrible. So it's, this website is just not usable. We've seen a bunch of them that are equally unusable. It just doesn't work. Um, and then, you know, that, that all leads down to search engine optimization. And so, you know, as we look at, if you're, if you're not planning to get found, you're not going to get found. And so if you don't have title tags on your page, if you don't have descriptions underneath your title tags on every page, if you don't have alt tags on every image, if you can't hover over your images and if Google doesn't know what that image is by you telling it inside of an alt tag, you're not going to get found for any of the content on that site. That's, it's, it's a very simple thing um, that uh, you, you just need to connect and be smart and do what you need to do inside of your site to get found. If you don't use headings, H1, H2, H3 headings, um, again, that's relevant content and that's the way that Google knows how, how, how you've categorized your website. And so if you don't have that content on your website, Google just doesn't understand what to do. So, you know, this is more or less, you know, and if you go to this page, you know, it, it, it even has, I think this was from a university so I didn't, I, I kind of grayed out that, but you know, H1 page title goes here, H2 heading goes here, H3 heading goes here. That is actually on a live website. It wasn't talking about SEO, but uh, it just kind of threw that content out against, uh, against the deal. So good illustration of what header content is, but really you need to look at your content and look at your website. And if you haven't discussed SEO before with your web designer or with your, with your company, Take a look at that 
and just start planning because a little bit of title tagging, descriptions, alt tags on your website, using the right headings, and using the right content on your website is going to do a lot of good to get you found. Um, black hat stuff like invisible texts, links to link spam places or directories as they, as they call themselves, um, that stuff all counts against you now. Google's gotten smarter and it continues to get smarter as the years go on. So um, that's that's just part of part of what we do. So if if you're if you're not doing the SEO stuff for your business, you're not getting found. So you know make sure that you're connecting up with that. And uh, wow, again, none of this content has anything to do with what we're looking for. Um, Common mistakes in SEO, not making your site crawlable or including the right words on the page, not having compelling content, not having a recognizable homepage title, and not using webmaster resources. There's a thing called webmaster tools that's very, very helpful and interesting. And if you, if you Google webmaster tools, you need to have a Google Analytics account in order to get this set up. But Google will actively look at your website and tell you what you need to do better in order to get better results. It'll actually look at your website. That um, Google page or mobile responsive analyzer that I linked to before, the mobile friendly test, that's on Google Webmaster Tools. So all of this stuff, Google actually tells you what you need to do and it's, it has its own service to tell you how to do better on the web. If you're not using that kind of a tool to help you grow your business online, you know, that's just free help that you're ignoring. So look at that. Take a look at take a look more, or take a look at more um, as far as the Google Webmaster Tools. And um, if we have a little bit of time at the end, I might even open up Webmaster Tools to show you what it looks like. One more thing before we get into the good side, and that's looking at random awful stuff. Um, again. Flashing buttons, animated GIFs, am ambitious sliders, too much action. You know, if you've got all kinds of stuff flying all over the place on your website, nonsense text, or even lorem ipsum. Um, if you're not familiar with lorem ipsum, that's something that designers put into the text of websites, and that's it's just dummy content. Lorem ipsum, I believe it's an old um, poem or something in Latin. It's a dead language, not useful for anything um, other than scholarly scholarly pursuits, I suppose. So designers forever have been using lorem ipsum as just placeholder text because it flows like regular English text or German or French or whatever, but it doesn't mean anything. And so if you actually Google lorem ipsum, delor select, um, it'll actually, you'll, you'll see just hundreds of places where this lorem ipsum has been placed out on a live website by a designer, and then they just forgot that they had that content out there. That doesn't help you at all. So let's talk then about what you should do. And I'm going to go back in, and um, as long as we're in here, you know, I'm going to hang on to the end to look at our people or to look at the, the actual, I'm gonna close down some of these ugly ones. And uh, we, we've got some questions here already. Again, if you haven't had a chance to ask your question about your website, as we've been talking, you may have thought of new questions. But from the event page today on the Twin West Chamber of Commerce website do's and don'ts page, under number one here, you're probably watching this event from the embedded window. If you click on the Google Plus page link, this link right here that I'm highlighting, it'll take you into this page. From this page, if you're logged into Google+, you can ask questions or suggest an industry that you want me to look at or have me look at your website or point out bad websites that you find. So just uh, if, you're, if you're pointing out a bad one, just type bad so that I know we can mock it openly. Um, if, uh, if you've entered in your website, again, we're gonna take a look at that and in about 20 minutes, we'll get to the content for actually helping out with your own websites and your industries. So hang on for that. But um, it, this is all about you as the webinar attendee, and um, we're trying to make this as useful as possible. So please do get a hold of us um, and enter in your content here. 
So we're going to look at bank industry websites. We're going to look at Tonka Financial, Gleason Printing, and Gleason Printing, my free sites.net. So um, hang on for those folks. And thanks to Gary and Gleason and Catherine for submitting those questions. Um, now, though, let's look through one final thing. Here's what you should do on your website. So, of course, you should optimize for search engines on your website, but don't forget that you need to keep your content human. Your goal, and really what Google keeps trying to do with every algorithm update, you know, whether it's Penguin, Panda, the Google Apocalypse update that they announced on April 21st, everything has been designed to make websites more usable to the people that are searching. And think about this from Google's perspective, and any search engine for that matter, but what their job is, is to connect searchers to the most relevant content available. If Google only spit out junk or spam pages every time you search for something, no one would use Google anymore because it's not useful and it's not helpful. So everything that Google does is designed to make websites more useful for people that are using Google. So what that means for you is you need to make your website as usable as possible to people that are searching for your content. Keep helpful hints on your website, make it easy to scan and browse, have ready headings that will tell people what to do, put title tags and descriptions on every page so that as people are searching for you, you're giving them the right context. For example, if I just had about as my title as my title tag on my website even if the, if it's the actual title on my page I can specify differently on Google to have it say about busy web web design and online marketing for business service businesses that's something that will actually show up and then instead of having no additional context I can say busy web is a Minneapolis based web design and online marketing company based in Minneapolis Minnesota uh, I think I said Minneapolis twice there, but we we specialize in WordPress web design, social media engagement and marketing, and helping our customers generate buzz without getting stung. That's actually a little bit long because I get about the total of a tweet, about 150 characters, which is about 10, 10 characters longer, longer than what you get with a tweet. But the goal is to give people the context they need to want to click. So as you look at this, you know, making it human and optimizing for search engines, so just doing the right stuff, the title tags, the descriptions, the heading tags, the H1, H2, H3s, the alt tags on the back of every image. And if you're confused on any of this stuff, just let me know in the comments, and I will go into the back end of a website and I'll show you what that looks like um, in our show and tell section, and again, in about 15 minutes now. Um, make sure that you keep your download time short and keep your goals in mind. So. With every website, you have an ultimate goal. What is that goal? Are you trying to get new clients in, right? Or you're trying to make more sales. You're trying to boost people's trust or sway opinion. Whatever you're trying to do with that website for the people you're trying to reach is what you should be focusing on. And make sure that you have a call to action, at least one call to action on every single page. If you're doing Google advertising, or you're linking to content from social media, don't just link to the home page of your website unless your website homepage has the exact call to action on it that you're trying to elicit from that advertising campaign. I had a client once who was an electrician and he was spending thousands of dollars a month on advertising for broken, broken fan or broken light switch or um, appliance problems, um, smell, smell smoke in my house or whatever. Um, for all of those queries, all of those search engine searches, they were the, search, the SEO company that he was working with was just directing people to the homepage and that required people to click three or four other places to find the right spot for appliance repair or for light switch or faucet or not faucets, light switches or fans and so what he was finding was that he was getting just abysmal results with his search engine optimization. As soon as we sent people directly to the light switch repair page 
or the, the appliance repair page on his website, everything went up because people don't want to have to hunt around on your website. They want to get right to what they're trying to do. Again, your website should be as useful as possible to a busy person clicking around on their phone in the middle of a conversation in line at a supermarket. If you don't pass that test, you're not getting what you need from your marketing and you're wasting money and time in your marketing. So again, keep your goals in mind and include calls to action on every page. If you have a lot of content, we saw all kinds of blinky pages and all kinds of content. As I mentioned, the first time I opened up that meet page, my, my fan on my laptop, I have a brand new Mac laptop, the fan was going crazy on it because it was using up so much processor. If you're doing that, that's asking way too much of your clients. It would probably crush or, or crash a lesser machine. Um, and if I didn't have a very fat bandwidth pipe here coming into the BusyWeb headquarters, I probably would have had to wait like five or six minutes for that page to load. And as a matter of fact, if I loaded it up on a 3G network over AT&T or Verizon, I'm sure it would take forever to get that content on my phone. I'll guarantee your visitor is not going to wait forever. And even if it's your mom, they're probably not going to wait forever to get your content found or to find your content and take take a peek. Um, make sure your site is responsive, of course. You know, that, that horse is getting pretty dead as far as I'm concerned. I keep beating it. But if you don't get it by now, if your website hasn't been updated in the last three years, semantically, there's a good chance that your website's not mobile friendly. And there's a really good chance, if that's the case, that when people search for your terms, the keywords that you would get found for, so for my electrician friend and client, if you were searching for um, fan switch repair, if your website's not gonna show up in that search result because Google says, well, this website's not responsive, why would I send them a non-responsive website if they're searching on a phone? Google knows where you are, they know what device you're on, they know what that size is, and they're only going to show that, again, to the most useful websites. They're only going to provide access to the most useful websites because that's what they're in the business of doing. Make sure that you connect your website with social media for search engine results, but also just to keep reaching out and to connect with people as much as possible. With busy web powered websites, when you publish to your website, whether it's updating a post, adding a new um, product or service, or just um, providing news and updates on your, on your company, that post can go out on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Pinterest, and Google Plus, again for search engine optimization sake, all with that one click. Save yourself some time and frustration and set your website up right. If you're, not, if you're on a WordPress powered website and you're not hosting with BusyWeb, give us a call because with hosting we, we activate that stuff and our hosting includes a whole bunch of other wonderful stuff. But just uh, make sure that you're doing yourself proud and integrate with social media. And then of course, keep your design fresh and relevant. The big thing that everyone that we showed websites off to today, uh, or that we, all, of the, all of the Hall of Shame websites, the biggest thing that they did was they created a website before the web got better. Their websites stink because they never updated them after their first try. Um, if, you've, if you've read Anne Lamont in her wonderful book, Bird by Bird, which is, uh, which is a book on the art of writing, um, she has what she calls, I'll, I'll, I'll sanitize it a little bit, crappy first drafts. If you're not doing a crappy first draft, you'll never get better. But if you stop at that crappy first draft, you're stuck with a crappy website. And so think about that and make sure that every couple of years you look at at least doing a mild touch up to your web, to your website. Look at what your comp your competitors are doing. I love Googling for competition for of my clients in different areas. So I will Google for electricians in Chicago or electricians in Massachusetts or New York or maybe LA to Give me an idea of what other folks are doing in other areas that might help me to streamline what I'm doing, to slightly improve. 
Another reason that I like Googling outside is outside of my, my local area is I don't want to look like my direct competitors. And so getting fresh ideas from outside of my direct competition is a great way to keep distinctive, but still find great information. And so, again, if you're looking at all of these things, the right tools that you should be using on your website include your site, of course, having update posts, keeping content up here, updating your, taking your posts and auto posting them to all of your networks, providing deals, offers, giving folks a real reason to interact with you and engage with you, um, using Facebook, perhaps for general posts and deals. And again, look at the screen grabs of BusyWeb social media. You'll note that these are all branded for BusyWeb. All of these need to look similar, related. They don't all need to look identical, but you need to make sure that people get your brand wherever you, wherever they might find you. So spend the time to customize all of your different social media accounts so that they look like your company. Use the same logo. Your logo needs to be square on all of the social networks. Note that BusyWeb's logo is very horizontal. So for our avatar or for our image on all of these social networks, we just use Buzz, our mascot. So use something that's going to be clear and concise and get out there. For LinkedIn, if you're looking for business to business work and um, trying to promote your thought leadership or connect with referral partners, that's a great way to connect. Google Plus is most useful for search engine optimization. Anything that you post on Google Plus with a link to your website, Google calls that a spark. And that's a very good indicator of quality as far as Google's concerned. The short version is, you know, Google Plus is Google's baby and Google owns the web, so you probably shouldn't call its baby ugly. So, you know, use Google Plus and you'll get results in search engines by, or in Google, by featuring your content there. Twitter is awesome for short updates and headlines or tips. And again, we have webinars on all of these. If you wanna look through the archive at busyweb.com slash events, I'm excited we're actually putting together an entire library of our busy webinars because we have more than 160 of them now. Um, but look for that later. We have everything that we've talked about today as far as content, search engine optimization, each one of these social networks, and of course, website information, we've dealt with in much more depth in our busy webinar series. So go to busyweb.com busyweb and search for that, or just go into busyweb.com slash events and scroll backwards through time. Any of those events, they're all listed there and you can just click on them. Or go to busy or youtube.com slash C slash busyweb to see our entire library of busy webinars. Um, actually, half of them are out there, and then the other half are from before. And we've got a link to those on our website. All right. In general as well, and probably finally before we get into our show, our show and tell, you need to use updates or blogs on your website. If you have content that's regularly updated on your site, that tells Google in particular, but also your clients, that you're serious about your content, you're serious about your business, and it helps you to just give more relevant information about the keywords that people might be searching for to find you. Again, to cover the entire psychology of what we do on websites and website design, our job as designers, or your job as a website owner, is to identify very clearly who your client is, and then get into their heads to figure out what they would type in Google if they were looking for your business. What they would type in Google is the keywords or are the keywords that you need to focus on for your website. So Minneapolis web designer um, for busy web, online marketing help, Google advertising, any of those things will show up. Um, of course, we're busy webs in kind of a, a weird space because just so happens that the keywords that we most need to be ranked for or that would be most obvious to get ranked for also happen to be the most competitive on the entire web. And there's a lot of bigger businesses that are spending a lot of money to get at the top of those results. And you know, God bless them, let them do that. This is what we do. We work with 
Twin West Chamber of Commerce to connect out and to reach out and be as helpful as possible on a one-to-one -one basis. So again, sh having website updates via blogs, showcases your work, keeps your clients up to date. You need to allow your fans to subscribe. You can use email marketing after people subscribe to send out an auto response message to keep up with people. And then you can share those testimonials and making some of that information members only can also promote a sense of community and make it seem and really make it real that your website is a useful resource for folks. So again, time to come back in here. If you have any other questions, and I'm just going to go in and, and just type one more time for folks that are here. Um, submit your suggestions for industries your website if you want us to review or any of your least favorite sites here. So go ahead and enter those in because we're going to go through and I'm actually going to take a look at some of these um, websites now. So um, we're going to go in order here. We're going to first look at Tonka Financial. And so TonkaFinancial.com, pulling that up, and I'm just going to give a high level and, and very polite um, deal on, on, what, on what your website looks like. So Tonka Financial, of course, um, great, great colors, and this is a very corporate feel website. We talk about color psychology. Um, in, a, in a past busy webinar. So if you want to talk about or if you want to get more details on colors and websites, go ahead and look at this. Um, or go ahead and search for that at busyweb.com slash events. I like the calls to action on the website and high tech analysis, personal approach. You've got your phone numbers on the website. However, your phone number is in an image. And so inside of this image, that's not clickable. And so I already know that your website's not mobile responsive. And if I squish it down, you can see inside of here that that is absolutely the case. Um, feel confident about your financial future. Yes, you've got that detail in here. And Gary, you have your content in, your contact information here, which is great. You may see that you've got a lot of spam that you're receiving, and that's because your, your personal email address is on the homepage. Um, a better option might be a simple contact us form, which I'm guessing you have on your contact us page. Um, yep, and you do, you have sign up now for a newsletter, um, no contact us form. And a lot, of, a lot of times folks will be more likely to fill out a very brief form than they will to send an email. So um, clicking on this, having this phone number clickable in this space is great. But again, um, as I look at the website, I think what we need to focus on for you is what that clear call to action is. Feel confident about your financial future is great. I would want to streamline that get it up north, up top here, and I would probably cut the amount of items in the navigation by about half. Just focus on what are the four things that people need to know about when they come in here. And so maybe instead of investments, insurance, advice, you just talk about our services and then let people go into that. And then having a section right here in the middle of the site that talks about investments and insurance and advice and having and having different boxes. For advice, I would have inside of your e-seminars or inside of the content in your newsletters, I would post some of that content up. Now I know financial services is a very different beast and you can't share specific types of things like forecasts or trends, but you can comment on the market and you can con and you can comment on what's happening inside of your business that you know about. You know, here are some things that you need to think about when you're looking at retirement. Here are some things to consider if you're looking at improving your tax, in improving your tax situation. Um, here are some easy things to stay away from if you want to, you know, here's, here's budgeting tools or whatever. So focusing on all that. Again, about us is in here and having this, this is, this is the homepage. Um, so having, Tonka Financial Services is an independent financial services firm. This focuses on you, and so I would probably focus out and say that Tonka Financial Services helps small businesses and wealthy individuals or people that want to be wealthy to connect with their financial future. 
um, or make healthy or make make sound financial decisions, right? It needs to always be about the people that you're trying to reach. And so focusing in, you know, having having information about you that says why you're qualified or what you do is essential, but that's not what you want to lead with. So get people involved and excited. Um, inside of the client center, you know, I'm sure that's details where people are going to log in. So again, on 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 the whole, your website is pretty good, but there's definitely some things that you could do better. Um, and as a matter of fact, if we take and we go in here, I'm going to hit copy, and I'm going to go to busyweb.com slash buzz. And this is our buzz report request form. So what I am going to do here for Gary is uh, I'm actually going to copy this. And this is as tough as this is. Inside of the buzz report request, we're going to go tonkafinancialservices.com. We're going to use... Um, let's see, for a keyword, I'm just going to go financial services, and then I'm going to email this to you, Gary. I hope that's okay um, by, po by popping in your email address. So we're going to go financial services, and then we're going to go Gary, and I'm going to type in the email address. I'm going to scan, and this is going to take just a couple of seconds, but I want to illustrate this. Everyone on the webinar is welcome and encouraged, please, to take a look at this buzz report form at busyweb.com slash buzz, and um, we'll come back to that in just a moment. I um, want to open up another tab because um, we have Gleason Printing is another one that we, that I, uh, that we were asked about. So... For Gleason Printing, I'm going to open up a new tab and go Gleason Printing.com. And so for the Gleason website, and you can tell that this is a little bit, uh, it's probably been a while since this website was updated. Um, looks pretty darn good as far as the colors. You know, it's very corporate. Um, as we scroll in, it's not mobile responsive yet, so that would be an important thing. Um, I would have a phone number up on the top here for when you are mobile responsive and get things in. But what I do like about this site is that next day turnaround, that's a big call to action, large format printing, full mailing services. You're getting right into what people want on your website. So that's great. However, on the top here, we have time honored and experienced, focused on service and competitively priced. We're kind of getting into why your customers want to work with you in the last two, but Yes, you have 70 years of expertise, but that's focused too much on you. So I would work on you know, highlighting the types of people and products that you serve. So focus on your customer first, and then follow that up with that you're time honored and experienced. So if you're looking for competitively priced, service-oriented printing services, this is what we do. And you know, I'm sure there's a few things that you that you really focus on with your website or with your business. Focusing on that and leading with that is going to be a very helpful tool to getting people to take that next step with you. So that's very high level on Gleason. I'm also going to go in and um, take a look at Gleason Printing my freesites.net. So very interested to see how that's coming, and uh, and what we see here. And so for Gleason Printing, my free sites.net, we're seeing this is this is a much updated website. I'm going to guess. And I'm incorrect. It's 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 sort of it's sort of mobile responsive. No, it's not mobile responsive yet. So um, Jack if Jack's website, you know, this this is better. Um, there's no direct call to action on each of these things. Um, good design is good business inside of this connection. Um, at this point, I don't know if this is a resort, a party website, um, or a fashion website. And I know that it's none of the above because I'm looking on here. Um, as you look through services, you know that does focus right in. And I like the fact that you've got your services right up front and center. Um, with Gleason Printing, I understand what you do. But then inside of services, if I'm going into press services, there's details in here, I'm sure. Um, actually, it comes up blank, um, 
and site builders showing up here. I'm guessing this is a demo page, but um, as we as we look at this, again, make sure that you make it as easy as humanly possible for people to take the next step with you, while at the same time sharing how they want or how how they can trust you to do what you say you want to do. So as we look at that, that's that's what I would that's what I would focus on. So again, thank you to Gleason Printing for submitting. Um, also, had another one come in for cclse.org. So I'm going to look at cclse, and then we'll get back to the buzz report results for um, for Tonka Financial. So Catholic Charities again. This website. Um, hopefully this one's mobile responsive and yes you can see that this is mobile responsive but there are a little bit of issues on the mobile responsiveness when I go into the mobile version this is this is sliding off to the side when I hover over it um, hover doesn't work on mobile devices you know I can't hover my thumb over my phone so you know that's a challenge um, but Catholic Charities you know, you've got some details in here Wow, that goes really fast when you hover over it um, so it's it's better as far as the mobile responsiveness so far but about us services get involved contact us blog um, very interesting it's got a big call to action up at the top donate employment and then some social media links I might throw the social media links further down into the page but you've got details right up on here and you've got quotes that kind of engage and this is a this is a personable thing this is someone that's or this is an organization Catholic Charities that has a real mission and getting in front of folks with that mission is important. You've got three calls to action across the bottom here, upcoming post adoption events, um, Catholic Charities vehicle donation program, donate today, need help managing your finances, apply here. That's great stuff. Um, this uh, The stuff down the bottom, these are a little bit clutched together. I would probably spend a little bit more time designing that in so it doesn't look slapped onto the bottom. But again, you've got more detail on here than um, a lot of the websites that we've been looking at. And so having that content is pretty good. So overall, I would probably give this website a B minus um, as, as far as the content and the details. Haven't looked at the search engine optimization, of course. So take CCLSE. And again, you might want to do that against the Lutheran Brotherhood or something else. Um, to to talk well, Lutheran Brotherhood isn't isn't a cat isn't an organization that's um, a nonprofit. But um, going in and, and typing in some sort of a field will give you this. Let's let's look at the page audit for TonkaFinancialServices.com. Again, I didn't include a competitor on this because I didn't have time to lock in the com the competition. But overall, this website has a grade of twenty seven percent. Um, there are 22 good signals, but 36 issues found. So this is what you're going to get for free with your search with your social media and search engine audit. There's a button to download that when you pull it up, and it'll actually email you a link as well inside of this. The page loads a little bit slow, but the size is okay. Um, that's probably an indication of a bad web host. And uh, again, we can talk about helping you with hosting. Um, Title tag should contain a keyword. It's just home Tonka Financial, and the tag should begin with the keyword. So, financial services at Tonka Financial in Minnetonka, Minnesota, or whatever. So, the tag is nice and short. If it goes too long, Google just cuts it off. If it goes beyond 60 characters, um, or really 55 now, um, Google might just go dot, 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 and doesn't hurt you, but it also doesn't help you. Description tag. This is exactly what it looks like. Tonka Financial Services is an independent full service financial firm committed to helping you build your, but we don't know what that your is because it just got cut off. And from what it looks like on here, it actually got cut off on the website, which is weird because you don't have that out at all. Um, for images, no alt tags, um, no keywords in the alt tags because there's no alt tags. Um, and then the top five keywords used, financial, Tonka, capital, investors, independent. Um, it's missing H1, H2, H3 keywords. And so, again, a lot of content and relation issues. It's, it's this, this is the result of a brochure website that could just use a little finesse and, um, and a little massaging to get it to where it needs to go. Um, 
Now, Catherine also asked for, oops, I meant to highlight that. So, Megan, we just uh, covered, covered CCLSE for you, and thank you so very much for submitting that. And again, please do fill out that buzz report request form at busyweb.com slash buzz so that you can get your full report. But also, um, we wanted to look at bank industry websites from Catherine. So I'm just going to type in banking in my Google search results. And so for banking, I'm going, I can see, you know, Wells Fargo is probably has pretty decent stuff. Let's go to PNC. They're a little bit outside, I guess, of what we normally do. Um, Banking.com, that's industry, that's in, in, interesting. Um, TCFbank.com. So let's look at these two. So PNC, you now these guys are a little bit further out, uh, out east as far as what they do, but they've got PNC online and mobile banking. The website has a lot of text on the top um, for a mobile responsive site, but at least it is mobile responsive. Um, and it talks about key features, and I guess key features is okay, but uh, what the heck is a key feature? Um, how we serve you might be a better link. Having these one-click buttons, again, these are slide overs, and that's not, that doesn't help you at all as far as um, mobile devices. So having these flyovers or fancy things, um, really if you're designing mobile first, which we all should be at least considering now, um, having that detail isn't, isn't helpful anymore. So having these slidey uppy things, pretty on a website or on a, on a PC, but they don't really do anything and it kind of messes things up for you. So PNC Bank, eh, I'd give them a B maybe. All this, all this um, flyover stuff, all this text, it's not very engaging. Um, but again, they're more corporate, at least from the looks of it. Small business, corporate and institutional, their personal banking page. You know, again, this is a little bit better, I guess. So I don't know what that page was. This is the homepage for personal banking. But protecting your identity, 80% of YPNC for your retirement needs. So I guess maybe it was maybe it was the problem with, with that particular landing page. No, there's no junk on top of here. It goes right to login. This is what you're going to see when you're looking at this website from a mobile device. So that's much, much better. I'd give this one an A minus. Um, I'd give it an A or an A plus if BusyWeb designed it. <laughs> so, you know, that's where we're at. Um, as far as TCF Bank, again, mobile online and mobile banking gets right down to the point. Enroll now. Big call to action right at the top. We know what we need to do. And if I'm scrolling down, it gives me more references. Move your money. Um, scroll in, track your cash, download the TCF mobile app, text banking. So it has all kinds of decent stuff on it. So this is navigatable. It has content on it. You know that it's going to be optimized from the back end. All of the content, if I hover over this, um, well, that's something. It doesn't have a um, alt tag beneath this image um, or beneath this one. So it's missing um, alt tags on the pages. But again, it looks pretty decent, and that's pretty engaging. Um, let me switch over quickly, and I'm done with uh, looking at bank industry websites. So I hope that was helpful, Catherine, and thank you very much for that question. Again, as a reminder, please keep keep filling in questions because we've got about a, about up to a half hour if you'd like to stay stay with us for that long. But um, I'm going to go in to give you a tour of some busy websites to give you an idea of what I mean with all of these things. Bertolas and Bakula. Um, this is a accountant and and um, you know financial kind of service company. So again, Bertolas and Bakula. We inspire people to live their dreams through our commitment to serve others. That's outward facing. That's a great call to action that tells people who they are trying to reach. It doesn't say anything about them. It says about what they do for their clients. Download your guide to growing your business today. Get started call to action right above the fold. And as I scroll this down, it gets right into the business of the website and it takes that content and the details that are in this site. You know, it's a, it's a little bit different. You know, they're an accountant, but they're different than your average Joe accountant. These folks reach out and they engage with entrepreneurs and they had a very clear persona that they were trying to reach and entrepreneurs are, tend to be risk takers. They tend to be in Minnesota, a little bit more outdoorsy. 
And so that's why we have this imagery and this content. Who we are, why we do what we do, what we do, questions, frequently asked questions, and then downloading, and then there's content inside of here on what you do. So seeking rock star staff accountant, you know, where they've got detail right in here and they update that regularly. Um, virtual office centers, great, brand new site. Um, this has a lot of flash and information on it, but again, when you get into the website, and if we scroll this down, um, it it comes across beautifully in these four sections on the on the different locations are highlighted on the home page. But then once you bring this in, again, this is the breakpoints, whether you're in St. Louis Park, Eden Prairie, Minneapolis, North Loop, Erie Dyna, we have rollovers here, but it's not urgent to see what that is. So it's just extra nice candy. And if I get down in here, it tells me, you know, St. Louis Park, Eden Prairie, Minneapolis, North Loop, I can click that with my thumb without a problem. And then there's engaging stuff on here. Success is contagious. They've got a great blog on their website and great details on what they're looking to do. So as you link inside of here, again, this is designed to be as useful as possible to the people that are using their website. And that's what makes it great. Um, Menenko and Hoff, have you been harassed on the job? Are you being sued by your former employer? Are you a Minnesota sales rep? Do you have a legal dispute? Here's how to call us. Phone number, 952, and it gives you the click right here. Attorneys, about us, that's highlighted right there, and it brings it right in. Minneapolis is trusted employment law and business litigation attorneys. They've got details on here. They've got calls to action. Help me know more. I want to know more. They've got just enough text on here so that search engines can pick things up, but we're not stuffing keywords across the website. Um, Warren Internal Health. Again, latest news. Content inside of the website gets right in there, has easy links to social media, and gives the details that you're looking for. Again, works beautifully in mobile responsive. North Metro TV, brand new website for us for the North Metro for all of the TV or for the TV station that serves up there. Featured programs, gets right into the programs that you want to get. This is the content, this is the places, this is what's now playing on the website um, or on, on either channel 14 or 15. And then they even have what's coming up next. You can look at that, you can watch things live on this website. And again, if that's all people want to do, watch 14 or 15 live in mobile, that's what it goes to. Watch 14 or 15 live. It's got highlights inside of here that you can kind of see and get called into. But this is the detail that you need right away at a glance. And it's got all kinds of content and context to help you continue to grow. Um, love that website. CBL Floors. Seek customers' expectations and exceed them at all steps of their flowing project. They've got all kinds of wonderful stuff inside, inside of here that they feature. They've got news. They've got store hours because that's probably what people are looking for. And then they've got an easy contact us form right down here as well. Um, Bennett Material Handling, same thing. I love the way this one um, sub submits when it goes down to the mobile version. And you know it just has all of that detail inside of here. It's just easy, simple. This is a forklift manufacturer. They do a one or a forklift sales and service company. Um, practical systems, great example of calls to action. Buy today, pay over time, help I need, service repair, maintenance, tune up, equipment estimate or quote. They don't ask you for a lot. And in the mobile version, contact us today, 24 hour service or help I need. It gets you right to where you need to go. And that's the way to keep your customers doing what they need to do. Um, again, um, Minnesota Home Rental. Find the home that fits your lifestyle today. Get a free market analysis today. And then content to back that up. Zero gravity. Tot time. 11 to, 11 to noon. Check your calendar. It's got details on here for everything that they do. Climbing wall now open. Tween night. Laser, laser tag. Dodgeball. Foam pit. And then content on the homepage to get found. You don't need to do anything other than visit the homepage to see what you need on this. And I also love that it does have a little bit of a HTML5 element that actually hovers. And on this news, if I do the same thing, if I hover over that, zero gravity applies and it goes upside down. I just love little touches like that. Um, image or spas and salons, hair transplant, liposuction, skin health, Botox, frown lines just aren't me. This is customer facing. 
the Chuba company gets right into the content of the website, cleaning your home's exterior siding in four simple steps, choosing the right replacement windows as seen on. So get letting people know, we know what we're doing and here's where we are and why you can trust us. Content, easy. Action coach, 252% profit club. You know, what would you do with Fridays off? It gets right into the content. You're giving two rules in, boss, in volleyball. How do you respond? Book a speaker, schedule a free action session. I know what to do immediately when I visit this website. This phone number is clickable, so I can dial it right there. Um, management companies, some, another accountant, great stuff, great clickable links, lots of content on the website, meeting the partners, lots of detail inside of there. Clear North Technology ha has secure practical solutions that work, so they tell you what they do, why they do it, and how to, how to get there. Um, personal training via G365. A lot of content on this site, but they serve a lot of different people. And uh, looks like FitPro is down on this one, but enter to win three months of free training. Get some right in there. Um, lawn services, help build your dream home or help me find your dream home. And about listings, properties, it gets right into all the details. Tell me what you're looking for. Browse my, browse my listings and all of those are out there. Um, Broadway party and tent rental. Great content and great details on what you need to get. And then once you get in there, if you need chairs, you click on chairs. And then inside of chairs, you can get more info on those chairs. And then you can add this to your tag list and they'll actually pull together the content that you're looking for by adding that to your estimate. You walk in, you get an estimate so you can see how much it takes to plan your entire party and to rent everything that you need. You click a button and you can have that sent off to the team and they'll have it ready for you when you when you stop in. Great way to build things up and to make it faster and easier. And again, everything on this site and all of our new websites is completely mobile responsive. Um, the Busy Web website, of course, is mobile responsive, but I wanted to highlight one thing. Twin West Chamber of Commerce webinar, websites, do's and don'ts, the ultimate guide to growing a massive email list. Regular content that's designed to engage built across all of the social media networks. New post, the ultimate guide to growing a massive email list has been published on BusyWeb. And here's an image, here's the title, here's the description. That's already reached four people. Um, here's, or 40 people. Ultimate guide to growing a massive email list on Google+. Again, that's mostly for search and there's, um, or for search reviews or search results, I should say. But again, I didn't do any of this. My website did it automatically. Go or LinkedIn, ultimate guide to growing a massive email list. Image, title, description, all on here. Got 26 impressions off of that one. Ultimate guide to growing a massive email list in Twitter. Note that this link goes directly to my website, not Hootsuite via an Owly, not t.co, not fb.me. All that stuff is helpful to other companies. I want to link back to my own website for search engine results. Same thing with Pinterest. And then when you do that, you get results like this inside of your search engine or inside of your search. So if I search for busy web, you know, here's, it's about our buzz builders programs, web design, request a buzz report, our busy webinars. And then this is all the places that you can find us. This is where people are. We've got reviews inside of here. We've got all the content that we need and you can see where we are and how to reach us. Quick, easy, simple. Um, I don't see any other questions in here, so I'm going to go ahead and finalize our presentation for the day here. In summary, um, BusyWeb can help you with all of this stuff. If this seems like a lot, we can help you out, and we have programs designed to fit every budget and designed to actually build your business. If you wanted to get a website done for cheap, um, you probably already are experiencing what your cheap website got you. Um, I would call our websites a dedicated investment in what you need to do. If I can help you turn your website into a lead generation machine that's going to turn out to print money for you, that's what, it, that's what BusyWeb builds our websites for. We say that we help our clients generate buzz without getting stung, and we mean that we get your website to do business for you without locking you in anything that you don't need, without wasting your time or wasting your budget on things that aren't gonna work for you. And we also do hosting, of course. Inside of that hosting, if you are on a WordPress powered website, talk to us about hosting with us because we can get your website secured 
we can get it backed up, and we can integrate social media with your website as we do with all of our clients so that when you publish to your website, it goes out on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Google+, Pinterest, and more. And of course, we do online marketing. So if you're getting to a spot where you need help with your blogging, you need help with Facebook, Twitter, Google+, you need help with Google Ads, or just with your email marketing to reach out and connect with your existing customers and continue to grow a base so that you can engage, inform, capture, and convert your clients, then talk to us about Buzz Builders. And finally, as a reminder, be sure to join us every Wednesday. Later on today, we're gonna to be talking about how to grow your email marketing list. And so um, tune in from noon to one on that one in order to see more. Um, we also have a quarterly luncheon on customer retention best practices tomorrow. And then stay tuned at busyweb.com slash events for everything that we do. I did mention before that, um, and, I, and we demoed the BusyWeb Buzz Report request form. If you just go to busyweb.com slash buzz, that will give you the report that we walked through with our clients or with, with um, the other online company here with this buzz report. Um, so for Tonka Financial Services, if you'd like to get that same thing, just go to busyweb.com slash buzz and it will tell you everything that you need to consider as far as search engine optimization and social media, how you're looking. And then if you enter in your competition, it will also tell you how well your competition is doing and what you're doing better or worse than your competition on those same things. So you can kind of see what's happening, what you can do to improve. And then of course, please get a hold of us because if you need this done and done well without getting stung, please talk to us. Um, that covers me for today. Wanted to get back to you and make sure that everybody had what they need as far as their online marketing and their business. So if you don't, or if you do have any other questions, probably the easiest next step is to go ahead and fill out that buzz report at busyweb.com slash buzz. But we would love to see you again. Keep, stay tuned. We're going to have more of these webinars in the future. And um, again, tune in at busyweb.com slash events to find out more. So if you want to go to events and find out what's happening, let's go there for just one second. And at busyweb.com slash events, we have what's happening right now. But coming up in August, we have um, in writing engaging headlines on the 5th, B2B websites, what you need to know, B2C websites, what you need to know, e-commerce websites, what you need to know, all through August. So if you want to check in on those, and of course we have a Nokia Area Chamber of Commerce um, presentation, we have SCORE webinars that you're more than welcome to attend with Social Media 101. Um, and so we love helping our clients generate buzz without getting stung. And so if you're interested in any of those, please stay tuned. Again, I'm Dave Meyer, delighted to have you with us. Thanks for attending today. And if you do have any other questions that you were too shy to, to ask with everybody on, online, or if you missed part of this because you had to take a call or something else was happening, you can go right back to the event today. And from the events page, right here, this is going to be a replay of this event so you can watch through it at any time. Or stay tuned to our YouTube channel at any time as well to see any of our events or go back through our events archive. I am Dave Meyer with BusyWeb. Thank you so very much for joining us. Remember at BusyWeb, we help you generate buzz without getting stung. And we'll talk to you next time. Have a great month. Bye.